Um, so my name is Akshay Jayavan. I was in the batch in 2014. Um, and uh, I did my IBDP here. I studied um, biology, economics, and chemistry at a high level. And I did the usual math, um, English, and French at a stand level. And uh, it felt really nice to meet my teachers after such a long time. It's been, I think, four years since I was in the school now, and I've you know, come and visited my, my teachers and some of my friends, and some of my juniors are now in 12. Uh, I, I met uh, Bhushan sir, who used to take care of our sports. I met uh, Pushpal sir, who used to be my dorm parent, and obviously I have a very personal, very, um, very personal relationship with him. Because he was my dorm parent, he, he was like a father to us for those two years, you know, when you get away from home. Um, I, I met um, Reddy sir who was in charge of my house back then. I met um, Rajini ma'am who used to take my math and I was very weak in math so she really pushed me and got my math uh, up and running. Um, I met uh, some of my um, brother's teachers as well, Miss Nancy, Miss Amitha, my younger brother was in the school as well. So it was very nice you know, meeting them and they recognized me and uh, all these flashbacks and memories. It was, it was really Really good. I met uh, a couple of my junior, uh, my juniors as well, who are now in 12, and you know, people like uh, Vedang and Afrin, and the head boy and the head girl. But I've never realized back then, they just, you know, they were already taking care of them and just to run for the you know, house and everything. It was really good to, you know, visit the school and um, see these after four long years. So tell us more about your present life. Where are you based right now, and what are you doing? Um, so, um, I study in Australia right now, I study at the James Cook University in Townsville, Australia and I'm down on business here in India, I am now the um, Study Queensland Global Achiever Programs Brand Ambassador and I'm here as a JCU representative as well. Uh, I study in Queensland, um, the state of Queensland in Australia, it's in the northern part of uh, Queensland and um, uh, I quite like Australia. I, I study um, aquaculture and business. I do a double major in fish and business. Way weird combination, I've heard that. But it works for me and it's something uh, I want to do which is not something a lot of people like. It's my own niche which I want to create and I want to specialize in that because there's not a lot of, there's a lot of need for it but there's, no, there's not many people doing it. Um, uh, Education in Australia is, is very different to what's offered in India. There is a lot of difference in culture, there's a, in, in the educational culture, obviously culture in general, obviously. But in educational culture, there's a lot of difference in um, general life between India and Australia. Um, and Australia has a lot of opportunities, which not a lot of people are aware of. Uh, most uh, students, uh, when, when they think of uh, education abroad, they think of uh, US, or Canada, or the UK. But Australia usually is not on the radar for a lot of students, but um, uh, it's something I would you know, really encourage, I would uh, back up, because um, the opportunities Australia offers in terms of um, education, in terms of job opportunities, in terms of something simple as um, safety or political stability, um, things like uh, getting visas is much easier compared to you know the other countries. Um, at JCU, um, uh, and Australia in general, and JCU as well, is very welcoming to international students. It's very facilitative um, to getting you know new students, and these myths about it not being um, open or acceptable it is it's not it's wrong. Um, some colleagues and I at JCU, um, some colleagues and I at JCU now founded something in a SASA, which is the South Asian Student Association, and um, I had the mentorship program there where we help students, international students from South Asia. Um, you know, we help them transition from India into Australia, um, help them cushion the shock, help them cushion the, the sudden change, and not only the students, but even the parents who are experiencing the sudden. Uh, change in their lifestyle by not having a child, with, you know, or, or one of the two children rather. So we help, we, we talk to those parents, we help students, and um, Cathedral was very, very uh, influential in this because when I went to JCU, I didn't have SASA with me. 
JC has an excellent orientation program, and you know they oriented me with the uh, university and with the city and what what it has to offer. But um, in terms of uh, in terms of dealing with shocks, in terms of you know as an Indian uh, dealing with the Australian culture, which is very different. And, you know, it is it's beautiful, but it's different. I didn't have Sasa with me to do that. I didn't have a mentor who would talk me through after hours. You know, once everything closed down. And the, the only reason I could look after myself was probably because I had a residential education background. Um, cathedral CVSL was very, uh, was very, very facilitative, you know, in helping us do our own work. We had to, we had to get work done, and we had to learn how to prioritize our work. Whether it's okay to bunk a day of sports and you know, sit down, buckle up, and you know, get stuff done. Or, you know, you need a break, you need that mental break. To figure that out, CVSR was very, very important, and uh, pastoral care at, at CVSR was very uh, good, very warm and comforting in that as well, where they, they, they were like our parents when we were away, and they definitely behaved and made us feel like their children. Um, uh, JCU has a lot to offer in terms of sports. We've got brilliant sports teams, and uh, I'm JCU Squash Club president back in Townsville. And uh, I represent uh, the, the JCU as a university at these inter-university games, and I head the team there. And it's actually because of Cathedral that I got into squash. I never played squash before I came to CVSL. And I started playing squash in the squash courts here, and I really loved the game. And I got into it, and when there were these beautiful courts in JCU, and there was a squash club established there, I joined it, I honed my skills, and a year and a half later, I was I was the president. I was heading the, the club, which is a is a big thing for me because I love that sport, and to be able to encourage that for new students to come in and to take it a bit further than where it is, that means a lot to me. Um, Australia, uh, JCU, and Australia is is something like I said is not a, something a lot of people consider. It's it's not on their top list. But um, I would like to tell the uh, new IBDB students, which you know will be processing their admissions pretty soon, is that yeah, well yeah, UK, US, Canada, they're brilliant, but definitely consider Australia. Um, the universities Australia offers, or even Queensland offers especially, they're just something you will you know you will be something very different to you, and you would like uh, in Queensland especially. I live in northern Queensland, which is three and a half hours from Melbourne, three hours from Sydney. So it's a fair bit away from those main hubs of Australia, which people know the country for. When you say Australia, first thing that comes to your mind is the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House, which is all Sydney, city, uh, Melbourne, uh, Brisbane even. But where I study in northern Queensland is where the Great Barrier Reef is. And, and I study fish, I study marine bio and aquaculture. And what better classroom than the Great Barrier Reef? I mean, there's nothing more I can ask for. And JCU organizes these uh, field trips for us where we are regularly on the reef. I am an advanced open water diver and I have my own research at JCU. And for that research, I often have to you know, go diving where as an undergrad, having my own lab space, having my own research is not something which is very uh, spoken about in Indian universities. Um, and that's something which is a welcome change in Queensland. Um, for those who appreciate nature, uh, a sim it, it's so accessible. Like for example, if you're in Mumbai, it's a two-hour drive to the nearest waterfall. From Townsville in Queensland where I am, it's a 20 minute drive. Nature is way more accessible. The Great Barrier Reef is more accessible. Beaches, uh, waterfalls, um, things like uh, something which we Indians don't even look at. Fishing as a recreational activity. That's something I learned in Queensland. And I love it. I absolutely love it. It's something I would have never thought of doing when I was in India. You know, experiences like these, this is something new, which helps you grow, which helps you develop yourself, your personality. And if you're going abroad, you know, the whole point of doing that is so you can grow and develop yourself. And in my opinion, Australia is a beautiful place to do that. And it is very facilitative in doing it as well. Um, I don't know, Queensland has a lot of myths associated with it, or it's racist, or it's a regional place, but it's, it's not. 
and I'm not just saying that for the for the sake of it. If you are respectful towards their culture, there is absolutely no reason they would disrespect you. No one does that. I have never faced any sort of racism at JCU. And JCU is a very multi diverse university. One third of the JCU population is international students. So there's a lot of people from a lot of different ethnic backgrounds and we all mix and match. As long as you respect the other culture, that's all you need to do. There is no racism associated really. And Queensland is so safe, JCU is so safe. We've got 24-7 uh, security, just like Cathedral. Um, we've got, uh, it's, it's like living in a residential school really. Uh, when I was in Cathedral, everything was safe, everything was cared for. I was, I was a nice, comforting, enveloped. Uh, sort of thing, and that's what that's what uh, JCU makes you feel as well. Even though it's a big, much bigger university, we're talking in a large scale here. But even then, it's just as safe. It's just as comfortable. You, as as a parent, um, if your daughter is going out for a road trip, or if your son is going out for a road trip on the expressway, you would be concerned mm -hmm. over speeding, accidents, this and that. But in Townsville, in Queensland, it is so much safer to just take a car, drive on these beautiful scenic roads. One side is the beach, one side is the mountain, it's great. And it's much safer. Uh, there's a lot of police activity around, so you know, you're never too far away from emergency services in case you need them. And these are just small things which have got nothing to do with education per se, but it's something you consider when you're selecting a country. And these are things which nobody talks about in Queensland, which nobody talks about in Australia. And this is something I think should really be offered or spoken about when you know IBDP people, IBDP students and parents are uh, considering uh, sending their children to her when you know they're making a career in a certain way. Um, and well, in terms of research and um, things like uh, non-academic uh, progress, even Queensland uh, and JCU are very open and uh, welcoming. In that, uh, I have my I do my own research at JCU. I do my own marine bio research. I have my own business related research, which isn't something usually you hear about when you're an undergrad. It's mostly post grad PhD students doing their own research, and uh, oh, I'm so lucky and I'm so happy to say that uh, I have my own lab space. I have my own fish I breed. I have my own genetic um, workspace where I work on. Fish genetics. I I'm one of the members of the JCU Marine Parasitology Laboratory, and uh, to be just an undergrad but be part of this international lab means a lot to me as an academic. And I'm sure when you would go into Australian University and you would access these facilities, these resources, and when you get the chance to be a part of something so big, so massive, you would start appreciating finer things as well as such major life events. So, um, in the end, all I have to say is, look, if any of you students want to contact me, feel free to grab my details from Cathedral. I'll, I'll leave them on the website, I'll leave them with the counselors at CBSL, and um, yeah, feel free to send me an email, connect with me on Facebook, and I'm happy to help you with anything related to Queensland Education Australia. I'll just have a chat about what, what's it all about, you know, uh, tailored to you if you need to. So, yeah, that's all. Thanks, Jayant. It was lovely uh, chatting with you. And uh, what is a message you would like to give our IB students who are going to now very, very soon complete their education? And you know, some of our students are um, had joined us when they were really small, and for them, it's like life at school. Is, this is their home. This is homeschooling. So, what is your message to them? Like, you know, how how should they? A little, um, you know, a little prep for them. What will be like, you know, once you're out of school? Yeah. Once you're out of school, once you're out of cathedral, no one's gonna come and wake you up at seven in the morning. You gotta do it yourself. Set two alarm, but you gotta do it yourself. Um, <laughs> you gotta make your own food. You gotta make build your own life. And cathedral is prepping you for it, but. What I would like to say is wherever you go, Australia, UK, US, doesn't matter, wherever you are, what's really important is that you have to put yourself out there and you've got to make it happen. If you expect to sit on a table and wait for things to happen to you or wait for you know, volunteer opportunities and job opportunities to come across your desk, that doesn't happen in the real world, it's never going to happen. You've got to take your resume, you've got to take your profile, 
get out there, talk to people and say, look, I want to do this. Do you have anything for me? I want to make this happen. And that is how you've, you've got to uh, get ahead in life and start building your career. No one's going to spoon feed you. No one's going to come and take care of you like a mother. Nah, you got to fend for yourself. And Cathedral is prepping you for that. CVSL, when I was here, they were very caring. But they also prepped us for, for the real life out there. They're teaching, the, the, the way they teach, the way they um, do things out here, they're quite, it's quite pragmatic. It's, it's really um, pragmatic and real life oriented. So don't forget what you've learned at Cathedral because it is helpful. Don't disregard smaller things like waking up on time or wearing an iron shirt to school every day or respecting the people who serve you food. These are smaller things which Cathedral is teaching you consciously, subconsciously and they do matter when you're getting out there. So. Thank you so much and it's been such a pleasure talking to you. I wish you all the best and do keep coming. Thank you so much. Have a nice pleasure. day. Yeah.